Hello everyone and welcome to the Anime Zillia and thank you for joining me as we talk about episode 7 of the Tower of God. An episode with some very intriguing dialogue, great character showcasing, and we get the plot moving, if only for a little. So we start the episode off with some great interactions between Anak and Endorsi. And this follows the events of episode 6, and we also learn some more information about the princesses and the laws behind them. Which I thought was very intriguing, as we learned that the reason as to why the princesses are forbidden to love somebody else, to have intercourse, and to make babies, is simply to avoid the powers that have been bestowed upon the princesses from spreading, basically. Now, the reason as to why I found this bit of dialogue very interesting is simply because... A law like this would kind of show that a king is fearful of a possible uprising. Because if you think about genetics, if you have a power and you have, say, someone with a very strong um, ability of using Shinsu, like, for example, Yuri, she has the nickname of Jahaz Imp, meaning she's very ferocious. Who knows? Maybe she has, like, a strengthening ability what makes her, like, more powerful, but like, strength sort of terms. So, if she was to mate with someone who has that Shinzu capability, then that could pose a real threat to the king in the future, and that's why the law is in place. Now, that's just me kind of thinking and rambling with my brain kind of going in all sorts of directions, but that's the kind of vibe that I got from that kind of law that's set in place. But, you'd be asking, why? Why would a king do this? Now, that's the question that I have, simply because... The king was stated to be the person to first conquer the tower, meaning that he should be super powerful. Now, why would he be scared of that? Well, I don't know the answer. It's not told us in this episode, but maybe it's because when he bestows a power onto somebody, he loses a part of his own powers. That's a possible reason. We don't know yet. We need more information on that part, but I just still found it interesting nevertheless. Now, one set of lines that I really did love from this show, uh, so far, and from this episode, just in general, was the line about shoes. And it states, as I follow, The princesses are like shoes on the king's showcase. They're beautiful, but never to be worn by anybody. And this line just reminds me of the first scene that we see in Dorsey in episode one. And I just love that connection. When I first saw episode 1 and saw in Dorsey's character, I was like, right, she has a good design. She has a background. She's in this weird, ominous entrance thing, so it means she's important. And to have that kind of link back, it's just, the connection just, it worked for me and I really didn't like it. I really liked it. It was cool. So, in Dorsey showing interest in asking if the real Anak, um, you know, regretted anything, was a nice fit for Endorsey's character, as she's already been showing signs um, of confusion and sadness in episode 6, stemming towards a connection between Endorsey and the real Anak. Because it was revealed to us that they did share a friendship. You know, Anak kind of expressed kindness towards Endorsey when she first became a princess, so it's only natural that, you know, Endorsey would kind of feel confused, feel a bit sad that her friend kind of broke the rules. She doesn't know why and she wants to find out. So this curiosity and this kind of interest from Endorsey's character, good character development, good showcasing of that, I liked it. And I wouldn't mind seeing Endorsey become this leader or guide-like figure to the knack we currently have now, guiding her and kind of being not like a mother as such, but just giving her that little push to help her on a better path. I think that would be pretty cool to see. Uh, we probably won't because it doesn't tie in with what we know of Endorsey so far. She seems like she's out for herself at the moment. But that again is to be decided once we have more information. But the real question is, did the real Anak actually have any regrets? Honestly, I don't think so. Because yes, she was fighting a lot with her husband, the Pie Baker. But... That's kind of normal in a marriage, isn't it? I don't know, I'm not married. But from what I've seen, couples fight all the time. And of course, she has little Anak, who brought her a lot of joy and happiness. She cannot regret that one bit. The next thing that I loved in this episode was the showcasing um, of Khan's 
information gathering skills and his cunning and wit to use that information in order to gain himself an advantage. This comes in a form of trying to help Shibisu and Hats find other friends for their list. And I just like it because it just, it links back to his role in what the current kind of um, situation is in the show. So I think that suits his character very well. And we know that he's a very smart character too. So seeing him do this is just another great example of how good the character actually is. So, what do I mean by the information gathering? How does he use it? Well, he learns slash finds out that Endorsey has a love for food, and he picked up on the line slash comment about hats being cute in her eyes. So obviously he planned like a, a set of words for hats to say to kind of convince her to, um, you know, go along with their plan, as well as the fact is she, they tempted her with food. And obviously, Khan must have learned that Anak has a love for chicken pie due to the documents that he read last episode. He's very kind of perceptive and he picks up on things even if they don't seem like they're um, a big deal, which I really do like. It's very telling and it shows off some good um, points to his character. Now, for the next part, these are my own thoughts and it's going to get a bit crazy, but just bear with me. Now, we have this gamer tag. And honestly, I feel like it's going to become a bit of a mess. Um, simply because when you look at Bam's team, he has not only Rachel or uh, Michelle Light, as she's going by now, to deal with, but also the blonde guy with the horn. You see him just behind me? As they seem to be teasing a bit of a rivalry slash hostility from this character towards Bam. Now, it's possible that Bam has a chance of failing his advancement up the tower simply because uh, if he fails this tag team uh, sort of challenge then they state that he does fail. I think I read that correctly and I think I got that right. If I haven't you can let me know in the comments but I'm pretty sure I read that correctly. It was a little bit confusing at the time but yes if Bam's team doesn't win this challenge he won't go any further up the tower. He won't pass. Now if there is in fact this kind of rivalry and hatred that this blonde dude behind me has um, has for Bam, then he might try and sabotage Bam's chances. Rachel as well. She doesn't want Bam to follow him, uh, follow her. So she might try and pull some stunts. Now, why do I bring this up? Apart from this being absolutely crazy and maybe ludicrous, it kind of does link back to the segment that we had about finding friends. Because... Hats now owes Bam and Khan a favour after getting help from them, um, otherwise he himself, with Shibisu, would have failed and not, um, you know, they would have missed a deadline. So, they're kind of indebted to Bam and, honestly, if we were to have like a situation where this blonde dude behind me and Rachel fights Bam, Hats comes in, I can totally see it, it would be pretty cool to see these two characters fighting. Yes, they're on the same team. But it kind of makes sense for what we have at the moment, um, based on the expressions, the body language, and the information that we currently possess. And Dorsey could kind of intervene and help Bam out because she thinks he's cute. She doesn't quite understand Rachel in terms of like what she wants to do. And plus, she wants the 200,000 uh, points. So that might be her like main goal and main interest. So she might not just kind of bother. I know it's a weird possible idea, but it's just, again, something that I thought about as I was watching the episode, and it just kind of intrigued me. Um, but again, it's just one of those wacky things. It wouldn't be a review of this show without me saying something wacky and out of the box completely. The test itself seems like it's nothing crazy. Um, because, I mean, it's a game of tag. So, in that respect, it's just simply the fact is... They have to show off their unique skills in their certain roles to help their team out to get to, um, you know, the winning goal. So basically what has to happen is um, there is a character, basically the fisherman has to uh, appoint a character to be it. And they have to help get that character who is appointed as the it character to their end goal. And honestly... I don't mind this. It's a simple kind of game, but it shows off a lot of tactical skills. 
It shows off the characters in what they've learned. And seeing Bam's kind of um, training montages to such, like showing him kind of, you know, developing and improving, has been pretty nice. I like to see a character develop, and it's good to see him finally control and contain his power to the point where he can't use it to like the extent that he should, which brings us back to the line about kind of being more of a, um, you know, a limiter as to being like a help. But I still think it's pretty cool. Now, we get introduced, I don't know if we get, we get reintroduced, so to speak, to a character called um, Quant. Uh, he is the red-headed ranker, and not a lot is shown about this character, but he seems to be like a typical hot-headed character that gets very angry and over-motivated very quickly. When we first see him, we do see a bit of kind of, um, not hostility, but just kind of a bit of uneasiness between him and... Oh, I can't pronounce his name. Uh, I keep trying. I keep hearing it and I keep forgetting. Um, the blonde haired ranker that we've seen so many times. I'm not going to try and say it because I know some people get annoyed when I do. Um, but yeah. Honestly, I want to see more of this character and we will do because he is an it character as well. If the teams can capture uh, Quants, then basically they get the 200 um, 200,000 points. So, that's pretty cool. Plus, I like to see what a ranker can do when they're in hand-to-hand -hand combat. We haven't yet just seen that. Should be pretty interesting. So, all in all, I thought this was a great episode with some good plot progression, some great animation, and it still leaves us guessing as to what's going to happen next. The showcasing of characters was also pretty cool. Dialogue, very interesting, and, uh, the information that we learn as well, uh, I did like. Now, if I did miss anything out, then please let me know down in the comment section below. Um, I might come back and revisit the episode in a later video if there is a lot that I missed out. So make sure you look out for that. As always though, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new so you never miss a video from me. And I'll leave you with one question. Who blushes better? Is it Hats or in Dorsey? Personally speaking, I'm going to say in Dorsey. But that's just my personal pick because a guy blushing doesn't really do much for me. But I want to know your thoughts on that. Who would you pick to win? Who blushes better? Is up to you. Comment all your thoughts down below. Hope you have a wonderful day. Aligator, Matane, goodbye.